Hi gang, welcome back. I'm Marion, aka Wine Lady 5000, and we have finally finished the Costco wine advent calendar. But now we're going to try a amazing wine from the Napa Valley from Stag's Leap Winery. We're going to be trying a Petite Syrah today. So, first things first, I want to tell you guys about the two different Stag's Leap wineries. Yes, there's two of them. It's very confusing. And they're both in the Stag's Leap district in Napa. So, there's a Stag's Leap with a singular apostrophe and a Stag's Leap with a plural apostrophe. These two have been fighting for a long time over the name Stag's Leap. But finally, a judge decided that you get an apostrophe here and you get an apostrophe there. And now this is settled. Now, the stag's leap that we're trying today is this one. All right, let's jump in. So I want to tell you guys about a wine club. Now, what a wine club is, is that you pay quarterly to have a number of bottles shipped to your house which typically over the year equal to a case of wine. Now, after you go to a vineyard, you try their wine, and if you really like it, you sign up because you can get discounts ranging from 10% to 30% on that wine. So if you plan on drinking that wine often or you go there often, a membership is probably your best bet. Now, what's also great is that you get free tastings most of the time when you're a member as well, which that's a really nice perk. Except for I live on the East Coast and this is on the West Coast, so I only get there about once a year. But I will tell you it is very, very worth it for me um, to get my wine all year round and to go visit there once a year. All right, let's jump in. We're going to talk about the Stag's Leap District. Now, if you remember from my previous videos, we talked about domain of origin. That is basically like the region of where the wine is from. So in Napa, they have all sorts of different types of, of regions. They have like Rutherford, they have American Canyon, they have Stag's Leap, they have Silver Run Trail. Um, and it's just basically saying, hey, these places are here. Now, this area has a very, very long, extensive past. The first grapes were planted in that region in the mid-1800s. Now, these two gentlemen, Mr. Grigsby and Mr. Chase, are two very important figures in the start of the wine industry in Napa. So, remember their names because they're going to pop up again. Now, Mr. Grigsby and Mr. Chase planted some of all of the first grapes and they built some of the first wineries and vineyards in that area. Now, during that time, all the way up until the mid-70s, this was a very small farming town. There wasn't much going on there. And also, America was not known as a wine-growing region. In fact, the rest of the world kind of laughed at us, like, the Americas don't make wine. What are you talking about? And even we bought wine from overseas, from France and Spain and Germany, all those old world winemaking countries, excuse me, because America didn't make wine. But Stag's Leap spelt this way, not this one, in 1976 rocked the wine world. And how do you think they did that? Well, through the Judgment of Paris. Now, the Judgment of Paris, if you've never heard of that, is a blind wine tasting competition. And what they do is they basically take wines from all over the world, and they have judges do a blind taste test, rate them, and pick out which one is the best wine. Well, Stag's Leap entered their 1973 Cabernet Sauvignon, and they blew their competition out of the water in 1976. And I mean, they beat France, they beat Spain, they beat all the other countries in them. That was unheard of. This put a ripple through the wine world. This is what put America on the map as a wine making country and one that was going to compete with the old world wines. Okay, now we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about Stag's Leap and we're gonna talk about the estate first. 
Now the history of the estate goes all the way back to 1871 when Mr. Grigsby bought the property. That's when he first planted, planted grapes on the property. Now he sold the property about, I don't know, 13 years later to none other than Horace Chase. Now Horace Chase in 1892 started making wine from the grapes that he had planted there. He also blew a hole in the side of the Palisades Mountains and he created the first wine cave on the east side of the Napa Valley. Now sadly in 1909, Horace had some really, really shitty investments. So he lost all of his money and he lost the house. But in 1913, Clarence and Francis Grange purchased the property. Now, Clarence and Francis did not have a hand in winemaking. That kind of have taken off and was working on its own. They didn't need to have their hand in it. Well, unfortunately, Clarence ended up getting severely injured and Francis had to provide for her family. So what she did was she turned the house into a prominent resort and she made it the must-see place in Napa Valley. It was an excellent business that she opened. Now not only that did she open a resort, she turned her place into a post office, a speakeasy during Prohibition, and it was even a war hero hangout at one point. So she knew what she was doing. No matter what she was doing, she was turning some cash in that place. Now after they passed away, the next owners who took over, which I'm not going to mention their names, but they left the house to despair, which is really sad. And it was said by the local Napin folks that it was a place for hippie squatters. And it was also the place to go for raging weekend parties. And if you go and look up the house, I mean, the house is just immaculate. So whoever was partying there probably had a really good time. Now, from 1970s to the mid-90s, the Dumani family owned the property, and they painstakingly restored the house um, after it was left to dilapidate, unfortunately, from the previous owners. Um, and the vineyard was also restored back into working order. Now, they took a little boutique vineyard, which means that they probably produced 10 to 30,000 cases a year, if that. Now he was producing 85,000 cases. Okay, so Mr. Dumani sold the property to Behringer, which is now Treasury um, Wine Estates, and they're still the current owners. They built a huge new wine cave off of the original wine cave, and now it can hold 7,000 barrels at a time. That's a huge wine cave. That's a really big wine cave. They also brought in some landscape architects and botanists, Robert Britton and Jonathan Plants, who created amazing gardens on the property. Once again, if you've never been there, please make a reservation and go. It is the most magical, beautiful place. It's quiet, it's calm, and all oh, flowers bloom. It's just beautiful. Now, this area is part of California. It's known for wildfires and earthquakes. There is a beautiful pool on the property, but sadly, it can't be used anymore. There's a giant crack from the previous earthquake. Also, um, they have lost a building or two from the fires in recent history, and they did lose some of their grapes from the fires, but they are recovering. They're doing okay. They're doing just fine. Now let's jump in to the Petite Syrah. This Petite Syrah is called the Nakede Malise. Beautiful label. This is one of their estate wines. Um, the black label here is for their wine club members, so you typically will not see these in stores, and you may not be able to buy these on their website unless you remember, um, but you may be able to get your hands on a couple of them. Now, the ne que di malice actually means don't give up to misfortune. Who do you think coined that? If you said Mr. Chase, you're right. <laughs> okay, so the Petit Syrah was planted on their property originally in 1893. 
but Phylloxera was pretty rampant at that time, so they were replanted in 1923. Now this vintage here was harvested in 2018, and then it was aged in oak barrels for 17 months. Now the winemaker, in his little notes here, the little pamphlet they give you, he gives you all of his notes. So what some of these say are layers of blackberries, black currants, and brambleberry fruits, and savory notes of mint and lavender and sage, supported by exotic black pepper and anise. The winemaker also says that even though it was a very small yielding year, this is a quality wine. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. You can see the color is just absolutely amazing on this. I almost feel like the wine swirls in the glass a little bit differently than those Costco wines that we had. And I'm thinking the reason for that is that, number one, it sat for 17 months in a wine barrel. And it's had time to grow in the bottle. It's aged. It's not a young, or it's a younger wine, but it's not as young as a 2020. Um, so it's got more body. It's got more depth. And I just love this inky purple color that we get. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. There's a lot of blueberry and black pepper and you get those savory herbal notes right on the bouquet. It's almost like you can just start chewing. You're like, hmm, well, you're smelling. The wine, oh, your mouth already starts to water before you even had a sip. It's fantastic. So you get almost a hit of like a little bit of pucker power right up front, but it turns into like this peppery firework as it goes back. And then you get this slight mouth-watering, gushy feeling from the acidity that's coming right from underneath the tongue. But then you get this beautiful leather feel that goes all the way back down your tongue. But it doesn't like just latch onto your tongue. It just overlays. It's like pulling a sheet over your tongue. It just sits differently in your mouth. That black pepper will hit right in the back of your throat and just It's like a firework in your mouth. And you get all those beautiful blackberry and black currant notes, but then you get those savory herbal notes too. You get the mint, you get the lavender, you get the sage. It's really, really a great wine. Um, so I highly recommend if you can get your hands on a bottle of this, do it, it's fantastic. So overall, gang, I mean, this wine is just fantastic. And you can see that from, you know, the different wines that we've had in the Costco to now, those wines from Costco averaged about $4 to a bottle of wine or half a bottle. So you're looking at maybe $8 for a bottle of wine. This is definitely a very higher price point. This is an over $100 bottle of wine. Um, so, like I said before, you can see how it sits in the glass differently. You can see that the color is differently. If you can also get a close enough look, some of those wines that we had from Costco had like a clear water layer that kind of on top. This does not have this. This is a very well-structured wine. Um, so if you can get a chance, if you can't get one of these, try your higher price point wines. Go to your Total Wine, go to your Wegmans, go to your other grocery stores. Ask somebody who works in the wine department to help you find something that's better than like an $8 bottle of wine that's going to have structure, that's going to have body. And if you have any questions or you want some suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to respond to you um, about some wine uh, recommendations for what you're eating. And we actually haven't even talked about that. You know, with this wine, remember, every wine that you drink is totally you it's all about you and same for the next person that's all about them 
Wine is an individual journey that can only be enjoyed by you because it's your taste buds, it's your palate, it's the way that you feel and that you perceive things. It's all about you. What I do recommend is that this can go with chicken, pork, swordfish, red meat, pasta dishes. Um, I made this mushroom risotto on the back of the card here and it would pair perfectly with that. If you were vegetarian or vegan, a portobello mushroom, this would go great with a portobello mushroom. Um, and also, like I said, a pasta dish, like a spaghetti, a red sauce. This would also go great with a cream sauce, but when I drink this, I think about a red sauce. Like, ho, ho, ho. So, I had so much fun today, gang, and I'm so happy to be back after the holiday and tasting wine again. So until next time, Cheers, and I will see you soon.